Hello everybody, uh, my name is Maurice Button, I'm the CEO of City and Financial Global and I'd like to welcome you to the latest in our series of speaker interviews. Uh, with me today I have the pleasure of uh, speaking to Dr Kian Ahadi, who's the Director of Strategy, Futures and Insights at the Law Society. Uh, Kian will be speaking at our AI Regulation Summit, which is being held in London on the 5th of October. Uh, Kian, welcome. Thank you, Morris. Really delighted to be with you today. My pleasure. Uh, let's turn to the questions. Uh, our first question, uh, in your opinion, what, what are the main risks that will need to be regulated as AI technology develops? Okay, so just to give you a bit of background, I've been in the field of data and analytics. So in the last 20 years, we've seen a massive increase in computing power and an exponential rise in storage capabilities, which has led to really exciting developments in the field of artificial intelligence. But with that comes a great number of risks. And, and I guess for me, from my point of view, there's, an, there's many we could go into, but a key one is bias and fairness. A lot of the AI systems we're seeing now are based on algorithms. And obviously a, a lot of these algorithms can pick up bias inherent in those people that created the algorithms. So, you know, we've done a lot of research at the Law Society looking at the use of AI across the justice sector. And one of the key things that we're flagging is the potential for bias in decision making, which might be carried over into a, any AI system that's developed. So that's a big risk, bias and fairness in applying AI technology. I guess another related risk to that is trans, transparency. You know, machine learning, all of these concepts are quite complex and a bit mysterious at the moment. So it's kind of making it very clear and transparent how decision making happens in these deep language learning models, for example. So transparency and being able to explain it is another key thing that is a risk and, and could cause more uncertainty for people. Uh, related to that, a lot of these AI systems use huge amounts of data, as I mentioned before. So data security and privacy is also a risk as well. So there's lots of personal information that could be picked up by some of these systems. So that's another risk that we need to be aware of. And I, I guess, again, as these things get applied in different spheres of activity, accountability and responsibility. So if something happens or something unfortunate happens as a result of an AI system, who's liable for that? And how do we determine liability for that? That's another major risk that we need to take on board. And I guess there's a number of others, but I think another couple of important ones for me is about robustness and reliability. Again, there's been talk of using AI in autonomous vehicles, for example, in different applications within healthcare. But again, these systems need to be validated and tested regular, uh, rigorously to make sure that they're actually safe before they're used. And I think um, linked to that, a key one is about ethics and value-based decision-making. You know, AI systems will make decisions, but what is the ethical framework these decisions are being made on? And actually, will these systems apply any ethics and, and values to that decision-making? So again, this is another risk that's inherent. And I guess a, a really final one is malicious use of these systems. We're yeah. seeing a lot around deep fake technology being used in video. Uh, we're seeing music artists having their you know, voices recorded and used sometimes without their knowledge and without their approval. So again, that's another risk that we need to look at. So those are a number of risks that I can see. So, well, in, in fact, quite a few risks. Uh, and I suppose you know, another risk is in the sense that an AI system teaches itself over time and evolves. Uh, transparency is quite difficult because if the original writers of the software uh, can't track down how the system has taught itself to, to change and adapt, uh, you know, how can they be transparent if they can't explain precisely how the algorithm has, has developed? Let, let, let's, let's move on to our, our next question. I, obviously, we, we already see approaches to regulation. We see in the EU the AI uh, regulation. Uh, we've seen the white paper from the UK government, which has set out a sort of innovation-led uh, approach to regulation using existing regulatory bodies. You know, how do you see these two models uh, in, in terms of a comparison? Well, I, I guess the UK model is going to, you know, the emphasis is on flexibility and trying to empower uh, kind of users to kind of set their own standards and, and, and regulation, which I, I think has got some advantages in, in trying to encourage innovation and adoption. So that's one of the advantages I, I would see with the UK government's approach currently as set out in the white paper that you mentioned. Um, I guess the disadvantages of that, if you compare it to the EU Act uh, around AI, 
is there's a lack of standardization. So the EU Act is much more standardized, it's much more clearer. And um, that also helps in terms of uh, allowing clear rules and standards that need to be followed and, and there's transparency around that. So I guess, you know, but again, the flip side of that is, you know, it could be a barrier to innovation, which is yeah. the advantage of the UK model. So I think there's pros and cons on both sides. I guess um, from my perspective, I can see the advantages of what the UK uh, kind of approach is uh, as outlined by the UK government. But I think it needs to, you know, my own personal interest in, in this and my own personal concerns are there needs to be some sort of regulation because I think with these technologies, they're adapting and evolving so quickly, like you mentioned before about machine and learning algorithms and, and the ability for these systems to learn on their own uh, without human intervention in a lot of ways that we do need to start regulating and looking at this much more carefully than we did maybe four or five years ago even. Yeah, and the speed of development in this space is staggering, isn't it? So I agree very much a need for focus right now. Uh, there's been discussion about the need for a global uh, AI regulator, and one can understand uh, the arguments for that. But do you think that's that's feasible? Do you, do you think that could possibly work? You know, where would it be based? Who would it be answerable to? How do you think that that might evolve that whole issue? I think in an ideal world, it would be a good idea, but there's so many different legal and cultural contexts that this regulator would need to cut across and, and actually understand for this to be effective in terms of how different countries have different varying legal um, systems, cultural norms, priorities. So a lot of this would be very difficult to harmonize and standardize. So I think that would be a major challenge. Obviously related to that, is enforcement and compliance. It'd be very difficult to enforce and, and, and kind of ensure this compliance with any regulators kind of uh, standards or procedures because again you know a lot of these things would be crossing national borders and, and who would be accountable, who would be responsible. So there'd yeah. be huge complications within that. Um, political and geopolitical uh, considerations as well. Um, that it would require huge amounts of international cooperation. And unfortunately, I think, you know, we've got challenges within the, the kind of global landscape at the moment with the conflict yeah. that's going on. So it would require a huge amount of collaboration. Although having said that, I am quite optimistic because I think one of the, the key things that happened from the COVID-19 pandemic was we saw much more greater collaboration between countries in sharing data around affection rates. And, and I saw a huge amount of data actually that was amazing in terms of, you know, uh, kind of sharing and, and kind of uh, contributing to knowledge. But again, there was different strategies em employed by different nations. And obviously some of them had more stringent uh, rules and regulations, others not so. So again, harmonizing that was a challenge. So I think just looking at that uh, as, as one recent uh, kind of lesson, it would show the complications in applying a kind of global regulator to AI as a whole. And I think the other key thing is just getting the balance right between allowing innovation and adoption on the one hand and regulating in the public interest and, and in safety on the other. That's not an easy thing to do and it becomes even more complicated if you're looking at it from a global perspective rather than a, a national or a regional or a local perspective. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Obviously very desirable in principle but the devil's in the detail. Uh, finally, Keon, uh, how does AI fit into the Law Society's global strategy for the next few years? Well, it fits in a number of ways. And, and my role at the Law Society is I kind of lead the work we do around research. And we've done a lot of research looking at adoption and, uh, you know, the, the adoption of AI and the broader adoption of technology. And really what we've tried to do is outline the benefits and also some of the, the caveats and, and the costs about adopting AI. So we really, what we try and do is uh, allow our members, so we've got 220,000 solicitors across England and Wales who are our members, we give them guidance and, and kind of greater understanding of, of AI and the advantages and also the disadvantages that they might need to be aware of. You know, our aim is to enhance legal services and, and one of our key objectives is to make sure that the justice system is fair and it applies to everyone equally. So again, there are opportunities within AI to improve access to justice. You know, you could use technology to improve lots of things in terms of decision making, speeding things up, making it better, uh, a better experience experience for those accessing justice and also making it uh, um, available to a wider audience and reaching a wider audience. 
Uh, but again, there's all of those challenges around making sure there isn't bias in decision making. If you're using AI to kind of um, enforce or do anything around the rule of law, that it's kind of understood and it's kind of applied fairly and equally. So again, you know, we do a lot of work around policy and influencing policy making. So again, we're looking at engaging with policymakers on these very issues we're talking about today, about regulating AI. We did a recent report looking at neurotechnology and advances in neurotechnology and how it might be applied in the next five or 10 years. But one of the things that report tried to do was to outline some of the, the caution and concerns that that sort of technology could bring into the fore. So again, it's about educating and kind of raising awareness across the legal profession. And I think linked to that, we're, we're looking at training around AI and offering training to our members so they can yeah. understand it and apply it. And also really just uh, giving them better uh, guidance to follow to help risk management. So a lot of things I get asked about from our members is uh, around a kind of buyer's guide to AI. What are the systems that are out there? Which ones are useful? What are the pros and cons? We, as the professional body, we can't really endorse one product over another, but what we can do is uh, help our members uh, understand what they should be looking for when they're appraising these systems and how they, they should evaluate them. So there's a lot of different things that we're doing. And obviously we do a lot of work internationally as well. So again, you know, we'll be looking to work with other countries and. Um, other uh, jurisdictions looking at the whole concept of regulation and sharing knowledge and information. I think we're all learning about AI and its implications. We need to learn quickly and we yeah. also need to stay ahead of the curve in order to make sure we uh, kind of realise the benefits from it. Very good, yes, yeah, a very steep learning curve, I, I think, for absolutely everybody. Sadly, we, we've run out of time, uh, Keon, but uh, we're very much looking forward to seeing you on the 5th of October. Uh, at the upcoming AI Regulation Summit, which is being held in London. Very much hope that our viewers of this uh, interview will be able to attend in person uh, and hear much more uh, on this issue. So it just remains for me to say thank you very much, Kian, for sharing those insights. Thank you, Morris, and I'm really looking forward to the summit and, and conference. So I hope to see some of the viewers there. Excellent.